Shit, baby, here he is, my boy. Welcome back for episode three of Skipper and the Prez. Um, like every, see, this is, this is the bit I love about you, Prez. Everyone thinks you've got this party lifestyle, but you don't become the best in the league. Fucking or, origin winning series, uh, uh, Wally mm. Lewis medalist, grand final winner, and then you're just getting after it, your day's off, you're not back in training yet, but you're still getting after it, baby. I love that shit. Uh, you, you would know what it's like, Scopey, with the mutters, mutters <laughs> rig, mate. I can't afford to be my eighth fat club um, in eight in a row, so I've got to make sure I'm back in good shape, mate. So I can't afford to be sitting with the big boys and getting flogged at six in the morning. So you know what it's like. Is that legit? Have you been in the, have you been in the fat club? Because I know all about the fat club. Surely you've got, <laughs> surely the, you've got the past. I've the last now. seven years straight. Have you? Oh, I love that about yeah, you. It's, that's, it's a, that's, a, that's a good way. And we'll, uh, let's hit the intro, Lukey. Tell me what you need and need us. Tell me what you want and want us. Tell me what you call and call us. This is where I do my best work, baby. Shit. Have you heard that before? We haven't done that before. No, I haven't heard that. That's outstanding. <laughs> yeah, that's the intro, bro. Oh, um, yeah, good. But before we start off, I just want to say uh, we're trying to reinforce now. Um, if you want to see all the content, um, especially me and Skipper in the Press, this has become one of my favorite podcasts to do. Probably actually, you know what? It's my favorite podcast to do. Um, you subscribe to the YKTR <laughs> channel. Um, you know, the more subscribers we get, the more content we can put out for you guys like this. And um, I love doing it. So let's keep it going. Um, On to the Prez. I'm, I've got a little write up here quickly, but I think the first one's uh, easy, brother. Um, First and foremost, how you been? And let's start off. I've got a new theme this year too, brother. I want to start off with a grateful. So just I picked it up from the boys that always um, give them props for getting this started for me in 2021. What's one thing you're grateful for as of today, this year, anything, brother? Um, oh, just grateful for, I guess, for the competition as get started. Obviously last year with COVID and everything, so – pretty grateful for Peter Valandis in that kind of regard with the competition and everything that happened. But I'm um, probably just family, mate. Um, obviously, haven't seen them for eight or nine months. So when I did get to see them, um, I cherished it for a long time for the 10 days I was in Rocky and, um, yeah, made the most of it and just spent some time with family and my my two my two nephews. And, um, yeah, like I said, um, family's everything to me. And um, that was something I really cherished and was grateful for that I got to see them at the end of the year. That's a very good grateful, brother. Um, I'll, I'll tell you my grateful. My grateful yeah, is for – yours? My, my new relationships, in particular with you in 2020. I, <laughs> mate, I made some really good new friends in 2020, including the boys that got me started on the Grey Fools, the 257 boys, yourself. Um, like we're in the card gang. I appreciate all the, all the boys in the card gang, but it's like a family. You know how like parents have got their favourite kid? Yeah. You're, if, if, you don't, if you don't know if you're the favourite kid or not, you're not the favourite kid. And and you're def- <laughs> and you're definitely my favourite. Um, I appreciate you, brother. I'm grateful for you. So that's my grateful. Um, I really appreciate you too, brother. The good thing about it was we didn't even we never even met when we did in Byron. It was like we we known each other for ten years. So mate, that just shows where footy um, can come. And yeah, I'm really grateful for that too. Yeah, that's going, brother. A few, few uh, FaceTimes after a few <laughs> few few days on the punt. A few Saturday nights, Saturday Avo uh, oh. FaceTimes. Then by the time we met each other, mate, it was so weird. Like. It was it was just like we'd we'd known each other for years, eh? Yeah, mate, and that's what I was talking to Chaz about. Footy just brings everyone closer, and um, obviously there's a lot of footy circles and that, and everyone gets to, gets to like each other. And I guess there's a lot of players around the game that you probably didn't like that you probably wouldn't think you're friends with, and then bam, you're probably like one of their best mates. So yeah, it's just crazy, eh? Yeah, it's weird. Those ones in particular, the guys like you play against, like because I hated you guys for so like having that manly <laughs> Melbourne Storm rivalry. It was like ingrained into us. As soon as I got there, we hated Melbourne. That's just how you had to be. And then since I've been retired and then being part of the card gang with you boys, it's like you, you are easily my second favourite team. Like I go for Manly. I played for, <laughs> I played for Para. You are number two. Para's number three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a fucking player, man, eh? Uh, so you touch on it, mate. You touch on your family, being grateful for your family. How was your Christian New Year's? Disappointing that we didn't get to catch up for the YKTR party, mate, but you didn't want to risk – especially after the year that you had missing out and spending time with the family for Christmas, potentially that lockdown, the boys end up coming up to Goldie there. But um, would have been good to see you. But how was the time with the family, mate? Yeah, mate, it was really good. Um, yeah, like you said, missed out on the party. I legit packed my bags four days before I jumped on the flight. That's how excited I was to see the boys and um, jump on the, the boat. You got to the airport, didn't you? Yeah, I got to the airport and then um, yeah, Ice told me it was cancelled and then um, I guess he uh, ended up rescheduling that night. So I think that was his pretty much an excuse for me not to jump on the plane. Um, probably didn't want to see me there. So that's understandable. But, um, yeah, it was 
pretty devastated I couldn't see you boys. But yeah, um, family was was really good. I'm um, a partner in her family and got to spend some time with my mum and dad. So it was really good. So yeah, really cherished it. Like you said, with being grateful and um, yeah, can't wait for 2020. And um, hopefully this COVID can go away so we can spend some more time together, baby. Let's yeah, go. That'd, that'd be grass, bro. I, I, even just like a couple of little golf days, hopefully. I don't know what the situation is going to be like when you start rolling into um, if there's some sort of COVID fucking bubble thing again. But if you're in Sydney, we'll, we'll get together. We'll have a couple of golf games. We don't have to just get after it the you know, going too hard. Or, we should do a little, little Skipper Prez charity golf game. Ooh, that's mm. a good idea. Imagine that. Mm. Earn a bit of fat. Mm, imagine that. Earn a bit of fat and then we can... Uh, Sydney there, just get some get some degenerates to come around from the punters club and just have a little round of golf. Fuck, how good's that? Imagine if we... Had, like, you know what? That's a good idea. If if, if, uh, if COVID allows it and um, we go through all the right chains, we speak to Uncle Frank and uh, Coach Bellyache, <laughs> see if we can get you an extra day to hang around and just have a game of golf or something. We'll, we'll see oh, if we can do some that. We'll, we'll take the cameras out and we'll vlog it. How about that? Yeah, and then if it gets any bigger, we can take them to Queenstown and go around the world, baby. Shit. Oh, shit, baby. You're thinking big. Huh. I'm thinking big. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, but also just on the Christmas and uh, family, how's the first lady too? She must be um, – you must be in the good books. You've uh, you've been um, looking after yourself. You, you had the one little blowout weekend, but um, it must have been good to spend time with her and, uh, and the extended family, obviously, with being in that bubble for so long and, and all the rest of your family, mate. That must have been really nice. Yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, she's um, pretty much my rock at the moment. Um, I, I think on Boxing Day, I didn't really drink Christmas. Um, so I kind of held on to Boxing Day and I ended up going three days and didn't see her. So um, she rang me the next on the second half day and said, look, if you're not coming home, um, your bag will packed out the front. So <laughs> obviously me being a little coward, um, <laughs> tail between my legs, went home and um, yeah, salvaged what was left. But um, yeah, it was a good um, yeah, it was a good three days. I love the first lady. I was filthy because she was supposed to come down for the YKTR party too, and we're finally going to meet. <laughs> She's unfortunately been on the other end of a few of my FaceTime calls at fucking one in the morning. So yeah, it would have been nice to meet her. Mate. Can All she does is talk about you. I can't wait. To, can't wait to meet her when um when we get the chance. Uh, moving forward to twenty twenty one, mate. Uh, when yeah. do you, first of all when do you go back to when do you get back to training with the boys? I've seen a few of the videos of the boys. They look like they're doing it tough. They look like they're struggling a bit. Oh, old baby goats light all, all over the ground. And with um, Coops and, and Smithy yesterday, what? Um, when do you yeah. get? When do you get back? What are your? Do you have? Are you a guy that sets goals? And um, yeah, so yeah, are you a guy that sets goals? And what are you most looking forward to? Considering pretty much the end of an era, obviously with with Smithy moving on. I, well, I don't even know if that's fully confirmed, but it seems like that's the case. Um, and you being probably the senior player with regards to the, the new look spine dynasty that could potentially be happening at Melbourne, mate. Yeah, really excited for obviously, like you said, the dynasty and that with Smithy maybe going. Um, it's not really confirmed yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, it's obviously looking towards the future for us as a as a group. And yeah, really excited for the young blokes coming through. Pappenhausen had a break at year. Harry just showed what he can do in the Origin Arena and. Still got Brennan Smith there, the cheese, and I love playing with him. He just gives everything he's got. Um, and then you got Jerome Hughes, who's probably the most form player in the comp. So, yeah, it's some exciting times for us as a group. Um, but yeah, um, I don't, I never used to set goals um, scope. So, but I did last year for some unknown reason, and yeah, I ended up ticking probably four of the five things that I wanted to do. Um, funny enough, that was um, win a premiership, win the Origin series. Um, the, fifth, the only fifth one I didn't get was my business degree that I wanted to finish. Yeah. Um, so I'm still working on that. But um, the other things was just um, obviously playing some decent footy and, and that was something that I really was consistent about, um, was really proud of, buying a new car. Um, so that was something that I was really looking forward to as well. But, um, yeah, mainly those those three big things was obviously win the comp, Origin Series and play consistent footy. Um, that was something that I really wasn't wanted to focus on. And back into the year, um, that was something that I – was really good at the start of the season. Um, I was okay, but uh, yeah, I really hit my straps after I brought my knee back. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed I'm going to be injury free this year and and hopefully um, go back to back like the the Roosters did a couple of years ago. Yeah, for people just touching on that bit, last little bit there for people that don't know me, because because we we become pretty close. I knew you were playing on. For people that don't know, you, the Prez probably won't say, but he was pretty much playing on one knee from the the finals all the yeah. way through. I, I, mate, I knew you were struggling. You you even talked about it at one point. I don't know if you're joking or not that, that you're going to struggle to make play Origin. This is this is going into the grand final. I'm like, 
Fuck, that, that's why I, I sort of had my concerns about the team, like whether you could beat Penrith, because you ha- you're, you're carrying that injury, mate. So you, you must be stoked to just get in the body right. Have you? Those are some nice, diverse goals that you had this year. Have you ever thought about how do you top? How do you top last year? Like, what do you what do you set this year, Clive Churchill, baby? What's up? No, look, that'd be nice, but Clive um, Churchill, yeah, Daily um, M or something. Nah, nah, that's actually that'll be some of my next goal. Um, now that Cameron Smith's gone, hopefully the baby goat doesn't take some points from me during the season. Um, in Pappenhausen, but yeah, look, that's, that's the hardest thing about mind. your team in the um, years, eh? Even over the years, I can't believe like Storm. Sorry to cut you off, bro. Sorry, like Mel, like Smitty, yeah. Billy, and Cooper. Even in the past, and then yourself, like he's always taking points off each other. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like those big three, they're playing at any other club. They probably have about five or six. To no disrespect to anyone in any other club, there's there's some great players in the game, but if those three were playing at different clubs, mate, they probably all three of them probably would have tied for about four Deli M's at one to, at one point there. So. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really, um, I guess, proud, and, and I'm obviously really happy with the way the club's gone about with their culture and that, and having them big three stay there. But yeah, um, it's going to be a tough ask for us to go back to back. Um, so that's what obviously not many teams have done it. So we've got the young, hungry team for us to do it, and we've got Jesse Bromwich that are most likely probably captain the team, and he's an enforcer, and I'm sure that he'll get the bigger boys in the middle um, playing playing well for himself. So yeah, I like to play under him and as a captain, and he leads from the front and. Hopefully next year um, we can we can he can show that and and show, show, show our performance as well. Yeah, you've got you've got a nice a nice array of like mid to late twenties players at the moment. Like those are that's yeah. the that's the wheelhouse. I, I think if you're recruiting, um, you know, you want to have some nice youngsters coming through. But if I could get a good squad yeah. of anywhere between like twenty three to twenty eight, if I was to coach, I think that's where I'd be aiming for, and I think you've got the perfect balance of that at the moment, like, yeah, including yourself. Well, no one really, no one really noticed with Christian Walsh being out too in great game two for us. Like he played game one and three, and yep. he just does those little things for us, and I guess it goes unnoticed. And a lot of people watch the game, don't really notice that. Um, but when you play the game like yourself, you know the little things in those games really make a make a big thing, and um, that's what we really focus on at the club. And yeah, he's one of the he's really an improved player as well, and expect big things from him this year as well. Yeah, for sure. I think I, I even thought about that. I think maybe last time we, we had a chat and we were talking about Origin, I remember leaving out Welsh when I was naming a few of the guys. Um, by far, like you know, I think him and Tino in particular um, both played with you guys and played us. Origin. He's going to be – I've got a really uh, high opinion of Tino like, like you probably do. Those two guys in particular, mate, they were unreal for you guys in both Melbourne yeah, and, and Queensland. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing how they progress next year because like you said, they sort of – you know, well, she's been around for a while, but Tino sort of jumped into the scene this year and and really um, put his name out there. So, looking forward to seeing those two guys. Yeah, excited as well, mate. Um, and you still got KP and Dave Fafita come back in that Queensland team too. So, I don't know where you're going to play them with AJ Brimson and the baby goat playing. So, I'm, well, the press might be the press might be on the side the side of the game watching. Please. Please stop being so humble. You know what? I love oh, when you be humble, I'm but uh, you, there's, some, there's some good players getting around. Yeah, this mate that. In particular, the KP Brimo conversation, that's fucking – that's a legit conversation now. I think uh, Titans are really going to – they're going to be my sneaky team this year. I think they're going to they're gonna sneak yeah, up sure. on – I think they're going to sneak up on a few people. They finished the year so well. Um, like I said, I've, I've got high expectations for Tina. I think people sort of forgot how good David Fafita is because of the, the year they had up at the Broncos and, and, he's, and he had those injuries. So, yeah, watch out for those Titans, yeah. baby. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Jamal Foggy will be improved again this year, so it'll be exciting to see them halves go again. Yep. Um, yeah, fucking oath. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them. And you know what? There, there is a vacant nine spot up there too. So mm. be inter- it'd be interesting to oh, see if it'd be interesting to see if there's any fucking nines out there. So we'll see what happens. Oh, interesting. Mm. Um, mate, well, that, that was good to chat. Uh, I don't know if you watched the 10 in the can the other day, but I'm finishing off on a, a, a new question just to wrap it up. It's a it's a bit yeah. of a it's a bit of a Thanks. giggle this one. Um, do you have, you got you got a sister, eh? Yeah, I got a sister. All right, you got a sister. So the question is, and I got this off a uh, like uh, it was like uh, the Minnesota Vikings were doing an interview after the game, and one of the players was going around asking asking the boys like who out of the team. So this is out of your Storm team. We'll, we'll stick it to the yep. keep it to the Storm. Who out of the Storm would you least like to date your sister, and why? How many can I choose? <laughs> <laughs> Just just choose one for now. You know what? We'll ask every week. So maybe your opinion might change. Every time we do Skipper and the Prez, I'll come ask you again. All I right. said, is, um, is it still so-and-so and why? 
Uh, I'd probably have to say um, Cooper Johns, <laughs> um, just because I know what he's like. Um, I know he's probably one of them guys that um, he's just a flirt. He's just a flirty man, and I think he just when he's out and about, I just think he just forget he'll have a girlfriend. Um, <laughs> I know, I know what he's like. It doesn't surprise me. So, um, yeah, he'd be the one Can that I would him, like Lucky? to date my, uh, my sister, especially yeah. when I see him walking into the front door. That, I'd start shaking, I reckon. Well, you know what? I got mail too from speaking to a few of the boys. Like, t- I was with Sexy Taxi Hoy up um, and, oh, and Jackie yeah, Johns. Um, and they were talking about Cooper growing up and he wasn't always the most confident kid. Like he didn't always go well with the Shields. But since he's been down in Melbourne and hanging out with you boys, he's grown a leg and, he, and he's feeling himself at the moment. So... Um, uh, he must be maybe he's getting a bit boys, too mate, confident, eh? <laughs> no, no. I, 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 <laughs> he's got a lot of confidence, mate, but I yeah. love that about him. Big, big Sandy, Sandy Earl too, hanging out with you boys, just thinking he's killing oh, it, maybe. Mate, honestly, and he's, you know he's what? got that much confidence, mate. And uh, so, rightly so, he's a good-looking rooster. He is, he is, and he's got a a good family family gene line. So gene line, does that make sense? He does gene genealogy, whatever. I think he's Hungarian. He, he tosses up. He's Hungarian anyway. <laughs> Uh, all right, mate. And the last one is, who would you let date your sister in your team and why? Um, I would have to say Dale Finnegan. Um, <laughs> he's just an up and down, straight up shooter. Um, yeah. Honest man, um, family man, and I just think he'd be the one that treat your, your sister right. So mate, I reckon him. That's what you want, mate. That's what you want. And he goes, hey. good, he goes good on the gat, can sing her a few songs. and Yeah, exactly. Play around the camp way, he'd be able to bring out a couple of bangers. How good's that? All right, brother. Well, was, uh, thanks for chipping in. Get back in your weight session. Thanks for uh, stopping that. We were at the time difference uh, up in Goldie, so I hit you up for 11 o'clock, but you didn't realise you are at the gym and you still come outside for me, mate, so I appreciate you. Love you, brother. Can't wait to speak to you Love again you soon. Too, man. See you, thanks, Prez. Boys. See you, brother. Up to skip. See you, brother. Love you. Love you, brother. See ya. <laughs>